Ambassador Krajewski. Madam Chairman and members of the committee, I'm honored to appear before you today. I want to thank President Obama and Secretary Clinton for nominating me to be ambassador to the Kingdom of Bahrain. Madam Chairman, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge my family members and colleagues here today, most especially my wife, Bonnie, who has served with me for my 32 years in the Foreign Service. For 32 years, I've served proudly the United States government and the American people in the Middle East and Washington. If confirmed, I look forward to leading the Embassy Manama team as we advance U.S. interests in the region and strengthen our bilateral relationship with Bahrain. The United States and Bahrain have a long history of cooperation and partnership based on mutual interests and regional security. If confirmed, I will make it a top priority to continue this partnership while encouraging and supporting reforms that meet the needs and aspirations of Bahrain's citizens. I believe that these priorities are mutually reinforcing. Bahrain's long-term stability depends on addressing domestic grievances not through repression, but through genuine reform and reconciliation. If confirmed, I will be working with our Bahraini partners to develop their ability to respond to external threats to the nation's security and ensure interoperability with our forces in the region. An increasingly aggressive Iran makes this effort critically important. Political reform and respect for human rights are, vi uh, are, are vital to Bahrain's stability and to the protection of U.S. interests in the region. Bahrain has a long history of reform championed by King Hamid following his accession to the throne in 1999. Given Bahrain's impressive progressive record on democratic reform, and in the context of strong partnership, the U.S. remains deeply concerned by the events that followed demonstrations in February and March of this year. Initially, the Bahraini government, led by the Crown Prince, called for dialogue with all parties. But as protests turned increasingly confrontational, the government declared emergency law, requested the deployment of Gulf Co Cooperation Council's forces, and began an internal security crackdown. During this period of widespread arrests and trials of detainees before the so-called national safety courts, there were many credible reports of serious human rights abuses by security forces. The U.S. government has repeatedly emphasized to Bahrain's leadership the importance of taking steps to address these violations, restore public trust, and promote national reconciliation. Towards this end, King Hamad has taken steps to foster reform and resolve political differences. Among these was a month-long national dialogue concluded at the end of July. On July 29th, the King declared his support for all matters on which the dialogue had reached consensus, and he ordered legislative and executive authorities to implement the dialogue's recommendations for reform. We believe that these are important first steps in bringing together Bahrainis from across ideological and sectarian lines. Another initiative has been the Bahrain Independent Commission of Inquiry, led by internationally recognized legal experts. It has a broad mandate to investigate reports of violations of civil and human rights. The commission will release a public report next month. We expect the government of Bahrain to give serious consideration to the Commission's recommendations and take necessary action to ensure accountability for abuses and to prevent any recurrences. Madam Chairman, if confirmed, one of my top priorities will be to support and encourage these initiatives and others to advance the process of democratic and economic reform. This will strengthen Bahrain and it will strengthen our partnership. Finally, Madam Chairman, if confirmed, my first priority will be the safety and security of all U.S. citizens who live, do business, and vacation in Bahrain. Our countries have benefited enormously from these exchanges, and I plan to encourage them. Thank you again for the opportunity to appear before you today, and I would be pleased to answer any questions you may have. Thank you very much, Ambassador Messina.
much for your statements. Um, we have lost, for the t time being anyway, the other two members of the subcommittee who were here, but fear not, I have lots of questions, so all of your work will not have gone in vain. Um, besides, as I like to say, it's always a good sign when nobody shows up to ask questions, right? Um, I, Ambassador Krajewski, I'm actually going to start with you. Um, we both talked about in our statements the importance that Bahrain has played as an ally to the United States in a very critical region of the world. Um, we share a wide range of security interests, um, but as you pointed out, the country continues to struggle with the demonstrations and unrest within its borders. Um, it has been strongly criticized by the United States and the international community for the crackdown against protesters. I, I was interested that in your statement you talked about Bahrain's history of um, working to provide more freedom for the people of the country. So can you talk about why you think um, the reaction has been um, so the crackdown against the protesters has been was so strong and why given that history the country has not responded in a way that um, indicates more flexibility and appreciation for some of the issues that were being raised by the protesters thank you senator when king hamid uh, uh, became king in 1999 one of his first uh, efforts was to expand uh, political representation to open political life. Uh, he even noted that he wanted to move Bahrain along a path toward uh, a model of a constitutional monarchy to that. And he established, the, the government established a more representative lower body of parliament and increased what I guess we would call civil society and civil freedoms. Uh, we were working very closely with them in that effort, as were others, and were very encouraged by it. He, Bahrain could, could be considered a leader in the region in these efforts. All the more shocking the events of February and March uh, to Bahrainis uh, themselves as well. I think the situation got out of hand. The government overreacted. Uh, we have, as you said, Senator, criticized quite strongly the very highest levels of the U.S. government, these actions. If confirmed, I will continue to criticize where criticism is warranted. I will also urge the government to continue its current efforts to try to recover from that shock, including a continuation of such, uh, of such uh, uh, events as the national dialogue to try to bring different factions of the country together to discuss a political future, as well as uh, watching very carefully, uh, closely, the reaction of the, re of the Bahraini government to the release of the Commission's report uh, that will detail uh, allegations of abuses, and most importantly, uh, what the government will do uh, about those uh, accusations. Can you talk a little bit more about how the national dialogue has been received in the country? Has it included um, prominent members of the opposition who were raising concerns during the demonstrations? When the National Dialogue was established, representatives of all factions of society were invited to participate. It was a fairly large, a large conference, including representatives of the major and minor opposition parties, uh, most, of whom be, at, at most of whom agreed to participate at the start. During the uh, conference, the major opposition group called Wafak uh, decided to withdraw. They criticized the way the conference was set up and they withdrew from the dialogue. Uh, we think that was a mistake. We urged them to remain and we urged them to continue to participate in what we hope will be future efforts to bring uh, uh, the political society together again. On another issue um, very important to us, as you pointed out, 
one of the reasons our security relationship with Bahrain is so critical is because of the fifth fleets being based there. And I wonder if you could talk about how strong you believe that security relationship is and how the people of Bahrain feel about the base being in their country. Thank you, Senator. Uh, this is a very important issue, and if confirmed, it will be one of my top priorities to do everything I can to increase the, the, the uh, strength of that relationship, because there are, this is a region that confronts very real threats. Bahrain has been a steadfast partner, strong partner to us. You mentioned the Fifth Fleet uh, port there. Uh, they, we have had U.S. Navy in Bahrain since 1947. It's one of our longest standing security relationships in, in the Gulf. Uh, I think that both governments in both countries recognize the value of this relationship and support uh, joint efforts in the Gulf, including the presence of the, of the Fifth Fleet. It has been a very productive and a very valuable relationship, and it is mutually valuable. I would also make one final point, Senator, uh, that others in the region, our friends in the region, as we, as we continue our operations in Afghanistan, as we confront terrorism and smuggling, and as you mentioned, Senator, as we confront the very real challenges and threats that Iran poses in the region, this partnership is increasingly important to all countries in the region. Thank you, Senator. So you don't, you're not seeing that the political uh, unrest in Bahrain has affected the relationship that we have, the security relationship that we have with the country. Senator, during the the worst of the demonstrations, the worst of the, of the confrontations, uh, America was not an issue. We were not targeted. We were not part of that uh, of that uh, event. Uh, our Navy. Uh, our na uh, personnel at the Navy facility there uh, have their families with them. Uh, we live out in the community, uh, the certain, uh, along with the families from the embassy and other. There are American businesses uh, that have been there for many, many years. Uh, we have no indication of any hostility towards Americans. Uh, certainly a discussion of our policies, as there are in many places. Thank you, Senator. To what extent were there signs that uh, Iran was behind some of the political unrest? Thank you, Senator. The, the events in February and March, in our view, were clearly begun by Bahrainis, uh, who were expressing what I think is their right to, ex to, 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 uh, to gather, to express their views, uh, we saw no evidence of Iranian instigation. Uh, however, we're concerned about Iranian exploitation, as they will exploit every, every situation where they can. We have seen it in other countries, and we are concerned about Bahrain as well. But this was a Bahraini-generated uh, uh, movement. And um, as you think about your role as ambassador and think about the U.S. relationship, how can we continue to promote meaningful reform in the country? Senator, if confirmed, that will be one of my top priorities. As I have said, we will encourage at every instance a continuation of a national dialogue, will, in whatever form that might take. We will encourage all parties to participate in it. Uh, we have, indeed, Increasingly, since uh, uh, 1999 uh, and the and the and the beginning of these reforms under King Hamad, uh, partnered closely with them in civil society, working on human rights organizations, women's rights organizations, working on, on the political processes, uh, free media, press, our Middle East uh, pro, uh, Middle East Partnership Initiative, MEPI, that began back in 2003, conducts many programs with these. Uh, non-government civil groups and as well as with government organizations and I have confirmed I very much want to continue and encourage
increase that effort.